my channel if you're new here my name is Freeland make sure you subscribe that way you can follow my journey to medical school and if you are a returning double major welcome back to my channel so today is day two of orientation for my master's program at Meharry Medical College I don't know what to expect today I'm super excited to learn more about the program and exactly what it's gonna take for me to get that acceptance into their medical school the other post back programs that I applied to they had orientations during their interview so I was able to hear from the admissions team exactly what the program was all about but but not for Meharry. So I literally accepted this program a little bit blind, not fully knowing the requirements of what I would need, but I have great faith that I will be successful in this program. And I wanna bring you guys along with me as we find out the tea about this new post back program. I have my handy dandy laptop here and I'm gonna do a quick synopsis of the first day of orientation. So we basically met senior leadership. Um, we learned about the counseling services there, which I will be taking advantage of. We heard from the Center for Educational Development and we heard from Student Life. And we also had a lunch and learn student panel where we got to ask questions from the kind of the SGA president, a first year medical student who just recently graduated from the MHS program, as well as a PhD student. So yesterday and today is a combined orientation between the Masters of Health Science students, the Masters of Public Health students, and the PhD students. So it was overall just a warm welcome to the school, welcoming us to officially becoming Meharian, but there wasn't anything specific about the program. Now today, on day two, it shook some things. Up. Okay, once they welcomed us, they told us about the class dynamics and they shared how last year the matriculation rate for MHS students, that's the Masters of Health Science students, which mind you, this is a direct pipeline to Meharry Medical College's School of Medicine. This pipeline, which normally has a matriculation rate of 90 to 70 percent, this past year the matriculation rate was 32 percent immediately everybody was like hold up hold up hold up I'm like okay it's time to get serious so the class of 22 statistics are that out of the 121 masters of health science graduates in May of 2022 27 out of the 83 on the medical track were accepted into the medical school which is 32 percent and 19 out of the 38 on the dental track were accepted into the dental school which is a 50 percent statistic already serious before but now i'm really serious i don't want these stats to scare me but i really need to be accepted into the medical school next year so, so i'm taking this orientation very seriously getting all the information that i need so that i can be successful this school year next up on our orientation schedule we actually heard from it which was super helpful because up until this time I did have my laptop set up with a specific Google profile for Meharry. My little bookmarks bar here. I'm logged in through my new school email that way I can access Teams, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and most importantly OneNote. If you guys don't know I love OneNote. That's what I take my notes off of. I also have Google Drive, my specific Meharry calendar or my Google calendar that's linked to my Meharry email, my Meharry mail which again is like my Google email that's associated to my Meharry email. I have YouTube on here which which I know you guys may be like, why do you have YouTube on your bookmark bar? But I am a video girl, so I like to learn through watching videos. So I just have a bookmark here because I'll likely be going to it often to find clarity on different things. I have my MMC, which is like your banner, or I don't know what other schools use. I know Spelman also had a banner, but kind of like your 
your home base so that we can see what all of your different classes are, who your professors are. Now, I don't have access to this yet, but that's why IT's presentation was really important because she gave me her information. That way I could email her and hopefully I'll get access to that soon. And then we also have Blackboard. I've never used that before, but I did get access to that through her live troubleshooting. So now I have access to all of my classes and I'm able to see exactly what I'm taking this semester, who my professors are, how my classes are. Like, I don't know why I'm super excited. Like, there was a lot of unknown. Classes start on Monday. Orientation was on Thursday and Friday. And so I'm like, I don't know how to prepare because I don't know anything about this program. So finally, getting a few of my questions answered have given me a little bit of peace. Next up, I have OneNote bookmarked here, I have Zoom, I have GroupMe, and I have a folder with all of my MCAT resources. I'm gonna leave my MCAT resources YouTube video linked in the cards up above because I genuinely like the resources that I used to study for the MCAT last time, but I definitely feel like I used some of them too late in the game. So I need to get my coins up because I need to go ahead and get access to UWorld. I'm gonna use those questions for a good amount of time. I also wanna use, um, what was it called? Not Jack Sparrow. I'm gonna leave it on the screen right now, but then also in the cards up above. So I'm gonna go ahead and deck out this folder here. That way whenever I'm studying for the MCAT, I have all my things right there. And speaking of GroupMe, I think one of the biggest surprises to orientation was that there has been a group me for the Masters of Health Science class this entire time and I was not in it. Like I have been struggling because there's a lot of, you know, HBCUs for their onboarding process it can be a lot sometimes so there was just a lot of things that I didn't know what was going on I had a lot of questions and I was emailing them trying to call them and I wasn't getting a lot of responses back some of the time so I was just out here in the wild by myself trying to figure it out and I made it through but I definitely was kind of sad to know that they were at least struggling together for a few months while I was struggling by myself. But I'm in the group me now and they talk in there a lot so I just have it bookmarked. That way I can continue to communicate with my class especially since I'm virtual. Another thing that I found out by reading the group me because I literally scrolled all the way up to the top and I was reading everything out like I don't want to miss out on any inside jokes. They weren't well they were joking in there a little bit but most of it was business related. Um, A lot of people moved to Nashville like a lot of people moved otherwise people are like from the south and that really made me sad because I thought that there were going to be more people who were just spread out throughout the country and that we were all going to be in the virtual gang together but even for the first day of orientation a few people like met up at the library on Meharry's campus even though this is a virtual program so I'm a little bit sad about that because I definitely considered moving to Nashville I didn't express that to you guys in my previous videos because it was just so much information but I was looking at places in Nashville versus Maryland versus DC obviously we know I chose DC and obviously as you can see I'm not in my DC apartment yet so I don't regret it yet <laughs> we'll see once I move in I don't think I'm gonna regret it but I'm definitely sad that I don't get that experience of being with the cohort all together but but as we go into my goals for this semester and the program in general I will say that I do plan on visiting Nashville at least one time but if not several times and I'll talk more about that later on in the video okay so let me start off by giving you guys the tea of the curriculum so there is of course a fall and a spring semester the fall semester has 16 credit hours it runs from August 8th to November 21st and the four classes that I'll be taking for four credit hours each are biochemistry, cell and molecular biology, microbiology, and physiology. So it's a very hard hitting master's program for sure. I'm most nervous about probably biochemistry. Biochemistry always gave me a lot of trouble but I know it's going to help me out with the MCAT so I'm excited about that and I know that's why they chose these specific courses for the fall semester. It's to help us out and do half of the work as we study for the MCAT. So my goal is to also be doing MCAT practice problems that coincide with these subjects as I'm studying these different topics. I haven't taken microbiology in a very long time so I'm curious to know things will come back to me but either way I'm going to put in the work and make sure I do well in these classes. So the semester semester ends on November 21st which is super early but that's because we have between November and January to study for the MCAT so goodbye Thanksgiving break goodbye Christmas break goodbye New Year's there's gonna be no celebrating this fall and winter it's literally gonna be grind time during that time we have like a dedicated MCAT studying period and then we have to take our MCAT by January 23rd let's do it let's go we got it it's fine registration for MCAT dates open up in October so I'll be vlogging during that time 
we can figure out exactly when that date is but there are no MCATs in December so I have to take it in January which means even though we have like this extended fall slash winter break we really don't have a break because it's a dedicated studying period and it's only for six weeks so that's why I'll be studying I'm gonna try and study throughout the school year there are some people who said they waited and that was good for them but honey for me I need a little bit more time because I can't push it back this time like I have to take it in January continuing on with the conversation of the MCAT the requirement is a 503 so it is the same as the last year, which is comforting. I'm glad it didn't go up. Again, 503 is significantly higher than the last score. So I'm just going to try my absolute best. And I mean, my goal is just to make sure that I'm at least scoring a 503 during my practice exams. That way I'm close or at least a little bit under. I think that if I'm a little bit under, the program will have leniency. But I think the best way to be safe, especially with a 32% matriculation rate from the last cohort, is to be at a 503 or higher. Also, another stipulation is that the individual scores can be no less than 122. So I have a video talking all about the MCAT and giving you guys specifics. So I'll leave that in the comments up above from the first time that I took a practice exam this past time I took the MCAT. So that'll give you more of an understanding of what I mean by no less than 122 on each individual section. Okay, moving on to spring semester. After the MCAT is done, we have to be back by January 23rd. We're going to be taking 14 credit hours up until April 21st of 2023. Those four classes are anatomy, neuroscience, pathology, and pharmacology. I have actually never taken any of these classes before, which is really weird. There was a great deal of pharmacology in my physiology program, but it wasn't a specific pharmacology class. Same with anatomy. In undergrad, I took like a biology class that was called form and function and it was considered to be an anatomy class but I've seen people do anatomy and I'm like this ain't anatomy so I think it's gonna be different never taken neuroscience before pathology like I'm very curious about this spring semester but again I believe in myself I'm a smart girl we got this the components of the grade evaluation are quizzes assignments small group learning activities and then exams what I'm seeing from the class schedules they're basically like a month will go by at the two week mark you'll have a quiz in every single class it'll be like a quiz week so on Monday you'll have a quiz in biochemistry on Wednesday you'll have a quiz in cell and molecular biology and on Friday you'll have a quiz in microbiology and then like that next Monday you'll have a quiz in physiology and then two weeks will go by and then you'll have an exam week and it'll be the same thing like Monday Wednesday Friday um, but on those Tuesdays and Thursdays it'll be like review days so that's gonna be really intimidating to always have multiple quizzes and multiple exams every time you take an exam or quiz normally the quizzes and exams are spread out throughout your semester and I believe that occurs three times but I'm sure I'll get the hang of it my strategy going in is just making sure that I am studying ahead and I'm staying on top of my work that way I don't feel like I'm cramming for three exams or four exams at the same time now that we finally have all of our questions answered all right my mom came in and I took these down to show her that I have made progress because literally we're moving tomorrow I mean why not just have my degrees just casually sitting here next to me guys we're about to be another degree hotter Breland BS MR MHS MD sounds good to me <laughs> anyway so let's go ahead and get into kind of like my to-do list after today's orientation the things that I want to like do to properly to properly prepare I want to read the tips to succeed in your class that was provided by the previous class again this is one of the reasons why I chose Meharry that HBCU family like the previous class is really looking out for us so they created this whole Google document for everything we need to know and things they suggest especially for the people who are moving to Nashville they show them like apartments they recommend restaurants they should go to bars they should try so I thought that was really nice and I want to read it before classes start next up I want to transcribe my study schedule into Google Calendar and my notion I have a video of me setting up my semester in grad school before and I'm gonna basically use those same resources except for now I use notion if you guys want to know how I like to set up my classes additionally I want to transcribe the office hours exams and assignments into my calendar as well I just want to make sure that I have all my dates pre-mapped out that way there are no surprises 
Next up, and I talked about this before, but I want to plan some trips to Nashville. Once I look at the calendar all together, I'm going to look to see when are some weeks or weekends that would be best for me to travel either to prepare for exams and assignments or after a quiz and exam. During this time, a goal of mine is to set an office hour appointment with each of my professors, some people in admission and some people in administration, just so that I can actually feel like I'm a Meharian and I've spoken to these people face to face. So I'm going to plan a few trips to Nashville. And again, if you're subscribed, you'll see those coming up in the future. Now, now, I've already started off this first thing, which I'm very sad about. I wanted to create a DMV group chat. That way I can meet up with people in the DMV area once a week or once every two weeks. So far, one person has replied to me saying that they're from PG County, Maryland. So I'm a little scared. I was really expecting for there to be more people. But again, it looks like a lot of people really did move to Nashville. That's okay. If I have to study alone, I will. But I also created a study chat with Spellhouse alum. So I believe that that will probably be my study group throughout the semester. If we vibe well, you know, sometimes you have to see how things go. Next up, I want to start filling out my AMCAS application. So that's the application that you use to apply to medical school. Now, because I'm in this program, I'm obviously getting an expedited review of my application by the admissions committee. However, I do want to apply to other medical schools. It's nothing shady. The medical school actually suggested it to keep our options open. So I at least want to start filling out my AMCAS application because last year it took way longer than I thought it would and I don't want to try and balance that while also in classes. Now that I am officially enrolled in the fall semester, I can re request for my transcripts to be requested from AMCAS with my first semester classes. So basically I can have it on my AMCAS application that I'm taking classes at Meharry even though I won't have any grades listed. Next up, I want to take a learning quiz to solidify my best way of learning. Again, I don't want to change much from the last time I was seriously studying for the AMCAT. But I do just want to make sure like are videos the best way for me? Is it visual? Is it feeling? Is it like I just want to make sure. Next I want to make sure that I can have access to all the textbooks that are provided to us virtually or um, digitally because they do provide our textbooks for us. So I want to make sure that all of them work, that I have it downloaded on my iPad. Going back to scheduling, I need to set up my OneNote. Again, that's where I love to take all of my notes at. It's a great tool to take your notes on. It's part of Microsoft Office. So I'm going to have all this new storage, which I'm super excited about because I ran out studying for the MCAT. All the different different tabs that I have but I want to make sure that I create like the different subjects for my different subjects and the colors and put the syllabi in there and really just set up my semester that way I have a really fresh start for the first day of classes and then last but not least I want to pre-read for my first day of classes I'm going to look at the topics that we're going to be covering in our first lessons and on the syllabi and start doing some pre-reading and watching some videos that way I kind of have a gist of what we're going to talk about it's been about a year and a half like or maybe two and a half years since I've been in the classroom. So I want to make sure that I'm putting my best foot forward. And overall, that's it. We are ready for the semester. I don't know if I mentioned it, but there is a GPA requirement, which is 3.5. Talking to some of the M1s, they did share with me that the program is very rigorous because it's technically designed to be a two-year program, but we're doing it in one. However, it is manageable. Again, everybody's virtual, but some people are in person. I'm going to be in DC. This program is open for both pre-med and pre-dent students. I believe we have about 90 people in our class. And in the fall time, they will be providing us with MCAT slash DAT prep, which I believe is going to be Kaplan. So I've used um, Integrative MCAT Tutoring before and Princeton Review. I'm going to be using both of those again and Kaplan as well as UWorld and maybe even Blueprint. Like I will use all the resources possible, whatever helps me out. And again, this program is like in collaboration with the admissions committee. Once I apply, it will expedite my application. And if I have that 3.5 and the 503, then it is a guaranteed interview. And I just want those high recommendations for me to matriculate into the medical school. So now you know everything that I know and we are ready to get the semester started. I hope you guys are super excited and if you are make sure you give this video a thumbs up. Maybe leave a comment down below if you're new here. I love to read all of my comments and I will see you guys in my next video. Thank you so much for watching. Bye!